Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, and today, step by step, fully explain, I'm going to show you how you can paint this adorable doggy in a field of lavender. I really love this painting. It was a lot of fun. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to help me bring this lesson to you by making sure that when I demonstrate a technique or explain a color mix, the camera zoomed in on it, you can really see what's happening. I'm going to tell you every tool, every bit of information. There is a traceable. If you check the links below, there's a traceable. There's a mini book. There's so many resources. This is part of a daily painting challenge called Acrylic April. You can just do this one painting, but I would love to encourage you to do all 30 with me because they're a lot of fun. They're all about flowers. So if you ever wanted to learn how to paint flowers, this is that. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back. I'm going to show you how to paint this. So for today, I am on the 8x8 canvas and I have the wish or intention for you guys that you have courage, resolve, and self-love. I'm going to start out rocking this number 16 hog bright. Um, just so you know where everything is on the palette, this is the cad red, cad yellow, burnt sienna, phthalo green, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, mars black, and titanium white. And starting out, I'm kind of excited because I'm going to show you a weird color mix y'all are going to be excited about. Okay. So. Um, and I, I should make this its own video, but if you had enjoyed me making secondary colors with primary colors, you're going to love this. I do enjoy it. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green and my quinacridone magenta, and I'm going to get purple. Isn't that crazy? It is a little crazy. That's super crazy. No. One of the things that I've noticed, and I'm going to let everybody know, is that you're you just getting over that little bit of a cold, aren't you? <clears throat> yes, I am, but I am fine. Yes. And I but, have lozenges and hot coffee and all kinds of things. So if you're talking, if you, if you have to, we'll, of course, mute. That's one of the things you may notice a little different about this episode is that, you know, we're going to make room in case I have to do little mutey mutes for cinnamon so she can... She don't mind. Them. You're painting with me at no. home. This Are is you a painting? loading up your brush in all of the purple paint that you're putting out? Let me just say this speaks to the determination of her. <laughs> because she's like, no, it's fine. I'll just not cough. I'm like, I have lozenges. <laughs> I, I so, have lozenges right here at the side. If I need to like get them going, I will. Yeah, I know. As long as I can stop it from starting, I'm okay. But the great thing is, is that we can always pause. Now, notice that this is very messy. And that's okay because this is an underpainting. This is what we're going to be building everything up on. And so it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, if I want the... the color to be deeper and more purple, I add more green. And if I want the color to be brighter, I add more red. And then up here at the top where you see Courage, Resolve, and Self-Love, I'm actually going to make a very light mix of this so we can come back with some like lemony, lemony green. This is the painting upon which you will paint. This is the painting upon which you will paint. That's right. The underpainting, kind of like the underminer. Except much for more those who supporter. are incredible fans. <laughs> I, I would say that this is a much, much more effective superhero. Like this under this this one helps you, whereas the underminer was kind of like you know, he wasn't a superhero; as a villain. So he would not be helpful. Well, it depends. Like, if you're a mole, you may really look up to this guy. Can you tell we have kids? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take this brush. I've kind of wiped it off on a paper towel, and I'm going to get some white into it. And it is going to have a little bit of the color to it, right? But it's going to be a very light version of that color. And that is because yellow tends to be transparent. And so on this part of the underpainting, where I know I'm going to be doing bright pops of yellow-green, You guys will be able to paint over it. Look at me trying to control myself. I'm like, I can do it. I tell you what, what we'll do is you do that, and then you hit, and then we'll give you a little pause for a cough. Oh, that would be perfect. They can have coffee, and I'll have a cough. And then we'll come back to the same step. Well, no, the step is done. Oh, okay. So why we get to come? I get to cough between steps, and um, then they can have coffee, and I'll cough, and then we'll meet back and do the next step. And we'll have a coffee plan. A cough and coffee. It's a coffin coffee for me. 
And you're just blending that lighter. I'm just Yeah, I'm just kind of blending that in. So there's kind of a nice transition because we have very dark grasses down here and it gets quite light up here. And I just wanted a nice transition. I'm really rinsing this brush out quite a lot, putting it down. We're going to dry this and when we come back, I'll show you the next step. Let's have a coffin coffee. So I want to lay in kind of where my cute, adorable dog is. I'm going to take my round synthetic brush. This is a number four Simply Simmons round. And I'm going to grab a little bit of white. I want you guys to do this in your with your chalk tool or some kind of sketching chalk or watercolor pencil. I'm going to show you in paint so you can see it. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little circle. This is also where you'd use the traceable. So if you have a traceable, this is the step you would put the traceable on. Right? And I know that I've got a little bit of a chest happening there. Right? I'm going to bring a little bit of doggy bum right here, kind of a bit above that. And then I'm going to also imply a little bit of doggy bell belly. And we're going to be very fluffy, so, you know, it should be okay. Now the head is, interestingly enough, almost a triangle. So I'm going to make a curved T and I'm ended at about the top of the circle. That's where the withers of the dog would be. And kind of put this in and that gives me a nice little shape to base the dog's head on. The, the important thing is the eyes need to come across the same meridian. So just like on a human skull, when you do the bisecting, where you divide in half and you divide in half again. You just want to make sure that your eyes will end up here and here, not here and here. And you don't have to have everything of the dog kind of worked out. You just kind of want to know, okay, this is, there's a dog here. There is a dog here. There's a dog and his dog is cute and has brought you flowers and you love this dog and this dog loves you. And so that's sort of this step. This is sort of how you sketch in paint, which is a little different than drawing. In, in painting, you have to sort of, create scale and space. So if you use the traceable here or freehand with me, either is doing fine. You're doing great. You're still in it. All right. Let's come back for the next step. Now in this step, I'm going to take my uh, number 10 hog brush and I'm going to make some little scratchy grass. Switch. And the beginning of the out of focus lavender. Take a little of our green. We like our green and put some brown into it. it. Makes it kind of a deep, deep green, doesn't it? Yeah. Smidge of the white. I'm going to come through and make little marks. It's okay, you can go where the dog is because we're going to be painting fur and things over. Hmm. I do want some of the purple to show through. This is very out of focus. I'm trying to make sure the lines are going uh, different directions because grass is messy. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that I've got a little layering of the green in here with the purple. You can see I kind of went over the tail. I'll go into the body a little bit. That gives me some room to play with fur and figure out placement. Hmm. A little purple, a little green. Okay. Now at the top here, we talked about taking it into that brighter green. So I'm going to take my phthalo green and my burnt sienna and add, oh, so much yellow. Mm. Even more yellow than that. This is just such a yellow green. And believe it or not, um, it's interesting I didn't put any Diox Purple out on this palette. And I really did that because 
Um, it's a very powerful kind of little purple. Mm -hmm. But it this color is more its complement than yellow itself. Complement is opposite ends of a color wheel. So that's what's making this kind of painting sort of fun. A little white in there. And again, this is sort of light. And you can see it really just pops there, doesn't it? Yeah. My brush is sort of fluffy. Not sort of fluffy, it is genuinely fluffy. Is that because it's a hog, hog brush? And and that's why I'm choosing it, because it's not giving me crisp, hard edged lines. It's giving me soft lines and soft lines like this are what feels out of focus. Huh. Let me come back with um, some slightly defined hard lines, right? Eventually to create little grass edges that really will play together in a symphony. But right now you've got to kind of just get these layers worked up. As I'm going through, I'm going to add a lot more white into this mix. You'll notice it's much lighter. An even lighter value here. Just sort of making the layers of grass. Yeah, and, and, you know, sometimes I'll add a little more yellow, creating the diffused value that's just slightly out of focus. Layering it up. Very painterly, isn't it? It is very. And that's what that's what, what's fun about this, you know, say over a, a photograph. It's a little bit kind of a line here, and I'm probably going to come back with some colors and break it up a bit. Make it more diffused. Well, make it not a straight implied line. The light up here in the corner. Maybe some coming down through here. Rinse out. And just diffuse here. See how I'm breaking up that line a bit? Mm -hmm. Very soft background. It is so soft. Sometimes it's hard to know how to paint things out of focus too. It gets overwhelming. Like how do we do that? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's dry this and we come back. We're going to add another layer. So as we go forward here, we're going to want to add some grass lines in. I have changed my water. Whenever you're painting a lot of complementary colors, change your water often. Okay. I'm taking my synthetic ground, <clears throat> and I'm going to mix some gray with my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna. So you're learning all kinds of crazy color mixes here. Yeah. And I'll just go right into my white. And start making some little irregular lines. So I kind of see this little line here mm -hmm. and how they're thick and thin and they go many, many directions and they're wanna <clears throat> zoom very in. sketchy. There. You want sketchy, sketchy lines. Sketchy, sketchy lines. Yeah. Now 
I'm going to make sure these sketchy lines, you know, cross even into my little dog body. I just keep enough information to know where the little dog body goes. So this is another kind of layer that breaks up that visual impact in the distance. My pressure is super light. I'm just running it through here. It's kind of relaxing, almost meditative. Yeah. Which is good. I need that today. Very meditative. Very meditative, right? I like the little grasses. Sometimes it makes a little more blue into it, sometimes a little more white. Again, these are sketchy. Slightly unreliable and untrustworthy grass. <laughs> <laughs> but breaking up a line. That just makes that sort of mid grass. Well, you know, we're standing in grass and stuff further away is out of focus, and then everything here is in a field of focus. So that's how we kind of can achieve that. We can we can play with focus and paintings even in a way we can't always play without a lot of filters in photography, because you can have many ranges of focus in a painting. You could put it all in focus, infinite in focus. You could put some in focus. You put some up front here, and then some. Here. You can just play with it as you want. And that, and that sharpness, that focus can allow you to play with where the viewer's eye wants to be. Now, going through, I might get a little more blue on my brush. <clears throat> and I'm going to paint in some blue low in the grass. Peeking through little points of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You'll see little triangles and shapes kind of created by your grass, and you can exaggerate those. Grab green. And here I am making another little purple. Oh, yeah. Just working it through. Getting a little purple some places. I don't paint out all of any color because I do want a variance of all that in here. Mm -hmm. You know, I want this to be playful and interesting. Because our little puppy is playful. Yeah. Okay, that's this layer. Weird layer, which is why we're separating into ourselves. When we come back, we're going to add some little folk, unfocused little flowers. So we've got lots of pretty, pretty flowers, and I'm going to start with my hog. Um, you can also use your round blender if it um, has a point on it, too, and I might play with these two. Let me actually do the round blender. Okay. I'm going to do the round blender and see first. Now, if you've worn it down and it's too round to have any point, then you'll have to switch to your hog, and they do wear down over time. I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone. 
and a smidge of my ultramarine and some white. And make little weird out of focus bits of flowers. Sometimes I tap up and down and sometimes I kind of like scribble. And I always come back with a little yellow and blend out. Not stuck anywhere. Don't feel stuck. Hmm. And again, pick the brush that's going to give you the most confident results. Right. I know all my brushes really well. So I can almost get anything out of any brush. But if you're new to your brushes, you may have to be kind of thoughtful about who you pick. Hmm, that makes sense. Think of it as like your team, right? You're putting together your painting team. And you have, you know, your strongest players. Those are the brushes that you have a lot of confidence and control over. And then, you know, maybe brushes that you're still getting to know. You wouldn't want to pull an unfamiliar player into the big game. I should never make sports metaphors because I don't watch sports. But... <laughs> Go sports! <clears throat> All the flowers. Just in the flowers? See how if it's like dry brushed, it's just very diffused. You know, and just look at your painting and you want to find balance. Mm -hmm. Just get the even flowers over there. And you're just mixing in there the... A little white every once in a while to lighten it and brighten some color so that they kind of pop forward. Oh. Some are dark because they're in the shadow. So even though it's out of focus, I'm still creating those little changes in value which make us feel like things are... Close, far away, shaded. And see, so just pressing it down makes these little messy flowers. Mm -hmm. Messy. And sometimes just a little. Darker, and I'm a little heavier over here. I'm kind of saying the flowers are maybe heavier here. Looks pretty cool, though. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. What a fun, weird little... What a fun, weird little painting. I'm going to rinse this out thoroughly. If I'm happy with the placement of my flowers, I call it a step. I'm going to do another cough and coffee. <laughs> when we come back, uh, we're going to start putting in the puppy. So we're going to block in our puppers and I'm going to start that with my synthetic round because I have a little control over it and then I'll come back with my other brushes to make fur. Mm. The white color is going to start with a blue gray. 
And that's going to be the shadow in my white fur. So down here at the bottom of the belly, things might be more in shadow. Ah, I see. All right, this is this is the shading of the fur. And a lot of him is covered with with flowers, so you know you could kind of work that out. I might add a little more white. I say something as the top, mm -hmm. or, you know, the outside. And again, he's very fluffy. Very, very fluffy. Very fluffy. But it's 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 kind of a scratchy process, right? It's not. Sometimes it feels like in painting it would be very super detailed and really. Yeah. It's just playful. I love that little upright tail. Oh, I'm going to get something. Hmm. Maybe a little whiter at the top. I try to put a dog in. I think I put a dog in acrylic April every year. It's kind of become a tradition. Like we get dogs and cats and certain certain creatures kind of come and visit us often. Mm hmm and so I was very excited for this little fellow. A little nose here. There's a dog nose coming in. Yeah, now I'm going to get into my brown. And my brown's going to be, I'll start with uh, uh, black and brown. I don't want it that wet. Very, yeah. Uh... Just painting in those shapes. Now I've got a little kind of triangle coming across ear here, and this one might come up and then down. I love those like little up and down ears. Okay. It should look crazy at this point. <laughs> Try what you have. I'll come back and I'll show you how to turn this weird hot mess into a cute puppy. So we have kind of a smudgy hot mess painted in. I'm going to continue on with my round brush, but we're going to start giving this shape and fur by using value and brush stroke and texture. So let's get a little white into our gray mix. Come to the top of the tail and just make little fur strokes, little kind of rough strokes there to talk about that tail. I'm going to flick out some little hair. And we're getting a little hair coming off. And then, you know, as we go down, we can gray it up a bit. Ah. This is in shadow. And I can always go into the blue more. And it's just kind of wonderful to just be able to play with the fur in this way. know that things will be lighter up here at the back and then we'll also have a little bit of light kind of right here doesn't come all the way down i'm 
I'm blowing a little, a little fur. See how they're kind of S strokes? The strokes have a little curve to them. Yeah. And you're always kind of doing a brush stroke in the direction of the fur. A little bit in shadow under where the head's going to be. Now and just look here. You start to just play with little bits of fur. What that means is I find highlights and I piece them out. I focus them. Hmm. All the little fur strokes. All them little fur strokes. I'm trying to say our little puppy is here mm -hmm. in the flowers. Well fed. Now, if you had different fur textures that you wanted, do you have any other videos on fur textures? I do have tons of videos on dogs and fur and how to paint different breeds and stuff like that. So uh, definitely, definitely check that out. There's another breed of dog or if you, I have so many videos on fur. Yeah, there's a couple out there. So many. <laughs> So if you, this is not exactly the fur panion you were looking for, fur, then the information. <laughs> Inf information. <clears throat> is out there for you to find. The truth is out there. And he's just looking cute as a bug. Right now in the head, we've got, I'm going to really come over here and I'm going to pull some brown out and I'm also going to make some orange. Hmm. Add some brown into that to kind of capture that first little layer of fur. Little forward facing ears. Now, what's the paint there at the very bottom underneath the yellow? That uh, one. Where? Underneath, underneath yellow. That one. Cad that, red? That's cad red. Yes. So you mix some yellow into the cad red to make You mix that some yellow, you mix some cad yellow into the cad red. Thank you. Thank you. Good catch. Sometimes it gets so concentrating. Right. I was just like, I wasn't sure if you'd said that. Well, and it's good to, it's good to have me kind of think about it. I'm going to start to brush this in the directionality of the head. So you can see I'm fanning that out. Just kind of fanning that first little bit out. Mm -hmm. Come into our white. And interestingly enough, this, this will kind of tear up into the face. Mm -hmm. They call it a star or something? I don't know, but you know what? I bet our viewers know. Ooh. I bet all our viewers really, really know what that would be referred to as.
And I'm going to kind of move this up and hold this towards my face. So sometimes if your artwork is flat, mm -hmm. it's hard to see it in perspective. So you've got to reposition a bit. Otherwise, things can get a little <clears throat> long. They can get the really out of hand. So I can have a little bit of a lip down there. And then, of course, a wonderful little bit of dog nose. Just sort of a little chevron shape. All right, let's put some, let's say, really here. And here we've got to have some eyes. We just want to have them on the same, you know, a little meridian. And I do them in kind of like light at first mm -hmm. so I can move them if I don't like their placement. Right. I'll put a little shadow under the ear and a little shadow under that ear. Check so, for proportions. Yeah, you got to kind of just make sure that their eyes make sense. You know, otherwise, your poor puppy. <laughs> <laughs> your poor puppy's going to have such a hard day. Let's get a little more of the brown mix. That's the cad yellow and the cad red. And a little bit of that, right? Like there's a little spot right here. Yeah. It's also there. Now let's dry this and call this a layer because there's a lot of adjustment here. What I want you to do is not get stuck here, but give yourself enough time to really find your features and placement and the movement of the head and everything. Right? Remember when you dry it, you can always change it or paint it differently or adjust. Okay. So take a deep breath. When we come back, I'm going to show you the next step. So when you're painting a painting that's very loose and expressive like this, you don't want to paint, well, you could, because you can do anything in art, but in general, we would paint the dog in the same style as the rest of the painting. Um, so as we go forward, be careful not to overly focus on minute details and more focus on value and color and loose expressive stroke. We're going to continue to layer up. I'm going to bring some of my brown down again and take my cad yellow over to my cad red where I make some lovely oranges, and if I get a little brown in there, some pretty fur color. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's get a little, almost an ochre. I'm gonna come here back to the tail, and uh, maybe on this side, kind of show a little highlight. Just a little bit in that fur, some yeah. value. And uh, perhaps here at the top of the back, A little bit at the top of the ear. And there's a forward line in the ear. I like to just find all those little spots. Now I've made the head small enough that I can add to it and fur it up. So sometimes it's nice to give yourself some room on things. I'm going to add a little white to the mix. And maybe kind of blend up here where the fur gets quite light. Like you, uh, I believe this type of coat, I watch a little Westminster. <laughs> and I think this is called a wire coat, but if you are a dog expert, you are certainly welcome to weigh in mm. and let me know. There may be many coats. But what you'll notice is that I'm really paying attention to the directionality of the fur. Trying to capture value in things. A little more white in there. And again, I'll have to, you know, lift up and look and make sure I haven't get a little slightly darker brown over here that I don't lose it. Right. The shape of everything.
you know, because it's totally okay to have lots and lots and lots of fur. Dogs are fluffy. Yeah. And you want to lean into that fluff. Believe in the fluff. Believe in your dog's fluff. I'm going to get darker brown. You know, maybe come up along the ear up front. A little bit there in the inside of the eye. Again, you know, values and hues, but I'm not trying to overwhelm myself with the details. I can even get into a little black brown. That's a little black, too much black brown. I'll just soften that there. Just getting that inside of there. Playing with perhaps the the highlights of that. So now we just find the little highlights. Mm-hmm. Now, when I get that brown in where I want it, this is coming in with that last little bit. And keep in mind, we've got flowers up to here. Right. So we put a lot of extra dog body so it could peek through the flowers um, and it would seem complete and we could be general about it. So keep that in mind so you don't get overwhelmed with like, my dog's body is giant. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you do that. You kind of bring in a little extra. I'm going to get my light fur color, which is a little bit of my burnt sienna ultramarine blue and white. And back up between the eyes. And flicked out. So you can see we're getting a little bit there. Now, like the brown on the left side, it's a slightly Slightly darker fur than on the right side. There we go. You can see that gets quite, the muzzle gets a little more substantial there. Get a little more of my light fur here. Kind of hit the right side. I might just a little bit under here, a little bit at that little chin. And I add a highlight. Mm. Touch a little bit maybe on that side just to, to show that the light's catching the muzzle. A little. And that creates a little shape on the head. Yeah. So just playfulness. And again, remember that you've got a lot of flowers. So there's a lot of forgiveness. And what we've got going on. On the, um, I want a slightly lighter fur. Takes me just a minute to kind of find my way through these. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't want to get so caught in it that it becomes that the dog is very different than the flowers around him. I'm going to get into my orange again, which is my cad red and my cad yellow. So there's a little brown on the palette there. And I'm going to see if I can do this with my round. See if you can get around to it. See if I can get around to it. I may have to switch into my detail brush just on the eyes. Probably will. Then I can start kind of thinking about the color and everything that's going to be going on there. On my nose, I'm going to take a little blue and some white. Up the nose, a little blue and white. And then a little 
not that much black, but black mm -hmm. down the front. So what you're talking about is that there's a highlight at the top of a puppy nose. Okay. Sometimes, you know, it's just knowing that, oh, I've just got to capture just a little bit here and there mm -hmm. to capture a lot. And when we come back, I'm going to pull my uh, detail brush into it because I think we need a detail in here. And uh, then I'll show you what you do next. So we're going to add just a few little details and adjustments to the eye, and that's really going to help us see our puppy. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, you know, this is a number four, but it's a monogram liner. Right? You want like a small detail version of one. I'm going to come into the inside eye. I'm pulling a little pupil. You can see that kind of yeah. makes the eyes a little less. What? And that'll be our big job is to get the eyes a little less. What? There you go. And get into my little fur color here. And just touch up where I need to to kind of shape that fur and everything. Yeah. I'm going to get a little of my blue and white. Watch for a hidden drop on your brush because it will really want to come mess with you about this stage. Mm. What it lives to do. And it's just a little blue and white in the eye. I'm going to get a little more brown on my brush. I'm going to thin it with some water. And this is, this is if you're new to painting, this can be challenging to get your brush control. But that's what paintings like this are for. They're for the practice of that, right? Get a little of my bright orange. And put it into the inside of that eye and to the outside of the other eye. See how we're doing? Yeah. Making sure we get nice value on those furs. Value the fur. I'm going to pull just a little bit of white, white on the tip. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll come up here and say just a little bit right here. The nose. Yeah. On the nose. So wet nose, sweet eyes. It's kind of like, what? What are we doing? I don't know. I can also take this moment to use the brush to kind of create some control. 
a little further. Oh, yeah. All right. That is the base of our puppy. Was that fun or what? Yeah, it turned out great. Okay. So be easy with yourself on this, especially if you're like new to painting animals. It will come with practice, but it's completely worth it, in my opinion. So we have a lot of forward uh, flowers and things to do before we put even the little bit of flowers in his focal mouth. So let's mm -hmm. start with our number four round. And we'll be back even into the green again. So I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green. And I'm going to begin to brush up some leafy foliage. Mm -hmm. Very similar in the brush strokes to the background foliage, but we're just doing some green. We're also going to break it in with some purple. So, And you can see what I mean. The dog is standing in the grass. Yeah, so you, no point in doing all the other little details there. It just, you'll just be frustrated with yourself later. It's like, I made the most perfect paw, and then... It was gone. I'm adding a little purple also, blending that in to these little kind of grasses, a little upward. This is just a foliage texture, right? And that's why we don't have to be super perfect about it at this stage. This is kind of like deep, deep in the weeds. The background colors for the foreground object. Mm-hmm. You can see it's just kind of quick and you just go through and you... Get that first layer in. Mm. Now, I'm going to get back into that purple and add a lot of white to it like we did before. And green in here until it's almost a purple gray. And thin with some water. And I'm going to put some more focal stems. So we're kind of pulling a little more focal stems in there. Mm -hmm. A little more in focus. Lighter in value. Now, once we have that in, let's give that a dry, okay? And so that way the next layer really sits on top of this in his sharp, crisp edges. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and some of that green from before with the burnt sienna. And I'm going to make some stems that perhaps are kind of coming out of his own mouth. And they're maybe going forward here. So he's got a little, little grouping of flowers. And catch some highlights on those stems and a little white to it. Right. Kind of fine. And let's get a little bit of our quinacridone and our ultramarine blue together. And it's a different purple, you can see, than the green and red. And I'm going to make 
regular little taps out. That will be kind of the beginning of my lavender. If you can kind of see it comes out kind of rhythmically. And you want to paint lavender, you want to capture that shape, that feel. Yep. Into my white. Some highlights on that lavender. He's brought you some flowers. Yeah. I feel like I need some contrast on my green. I'm going to come in and with a dark value. Oh, I see. Yeah. Do that sure I've got some nice contrast. I might even get an even lighter, lighter purple. I would like that lavender to stand out. You can always come back, get a little bit of his uh, fur color and kind of blend that in, see? Where you're like making sure that there's the, the right layering. So he's got his little bunch of flowers here and we can come and even put in another little bunch of flowers here. Actually, let's call that another step. We'll do his mouth and then we'll do the final flowers up front in its own step. That way you guys aren't getting overwhelmed. Now I'm taking my phthalo green, my burnt sienna, and a lot of my cad yellow, and I'm making some brighter greens that are really going to stand out. All right. And I'm going to do some focal stems here. And I'm also going to make some like little touch pull leaf strokes. So see how that's a little more textural. You can really kind of piece it out and see it. Oh, yeah. It's still loose. Just my number four, and I'm just, let me see, I can just pull that little stroke down and kind of work them in loosely. I want to come through there and just make sure that they are standing out. Mm -hmm. A little bit of these leaves here and there. And so it's that yellow, right, coming back in. Playing against everything. So this is really a painting about contrast, and that's what makes it kind of compelling. And we're really getting close to being done. So if you're feeling a little tired, just know that you're near the end. This has gone pretty quickly. It's been just flower, 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 flower. Flower, flower, flower. That's what this month is. Flower, flower, flower. There's a little bit of fur. I forgot to talk about this. It's acrylic April. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm so like today I'm just painting this dog. <laughs> Daily painting. It gets like this in the middle of the month. Well, and also you were not as talky because your voice was really having a hard time earlier. Yeah. But it's since then... I think the coffee has helped heal you. Coffee is very healing. 
Now, while I'm here, I want these little purple flowers where the dog is to stand out more. So I'm going to come into my gray color. Right? I'm going to make a much lighter one. And this is something that you have to do sometimes where you look at something and you're like, oh, hey, you are not really standing out. Oh, yeah. So you've got to come in and be like. <clears throat> Creating some more. What's the value contrast? that we're missing that is. Shouldn't have talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, you miss me. you're just adding some mid-ground contrast yeah it we just need to for these to really show up you've got to have contrast because everything is in such a similar hue and it's okay to be like oh hey i think uh get a little blue here that's part of painting is learning to see If something needs a little bit of extra oomph. Right. See, then I can come back with my darkest purple and make sure that those flowers truly, truly stand out. There we're doing. Mm-hmm. Because now there's some contrast that they can play against. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's part of what you're learning when you're painting in one of these little challenge months. Is how do I... Pink there. There's something to kind of balance it all in. There we go. I think that's pretty good. It is. So we put a lighter value there. You can always come back and see how I fix the fur there. You. So that's why I'm always like in acrylic painting, if something goes wrong, don't panic. You just let it dry and fix it. Now I can go back to my green that I was doing earlier. My phthalo green, my burnt sienna, my yellow. I'm going to add some white to it and get quite a light value. I'm going to just make sure that there's some of that. So it's back there, and it's also here. So those crazy pops of color are existing in both places. What do you think of that? I think it's cool. I think it's cool, too. I'm making sure I can see it all good. I'm going to put some of that there. I think that'll be interesting. Kind of leads through. Sometimes you'll get to playing with paint and you'll be like, oh, let's put some colors here and there. So again, just trying to be painterly and make sure that this has color that's here and through here. And I do think I want to move some green through the grass. Connecting these two spaces up. See how we're doing? Where we're connecting this green. And we're going to kind of frame around here, connecting from this space so that it ties in. Now, doesn't that look a little bit better where it flows through? All right, when we come back, clean water, and we're going to put some flowers on tops of these little stalks.
One of the things I want to do is I want to drop the eye down a little bit on on my puppy here just because his eyes are too open. Mm. So I'm going to take a little of my brown down to my red and yellow. All right, get a little white involved. Make that light fur color again. I'm going to tip this up so I have a nice angle on it very carefully. Oh, just Super a little, carefully. little eyebrow. Just a little bit to tip down. And that's a preference for me, um, just not having the eyes, because sometimes it's easy to exaggerate. I'm going to get a little black going here. Sometimes it's very easy to exaggerate an eye. Mm -hmm. The scale of an eye, the size of an eye. I'm just shading a little bit. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll come in and be like, does my, does my dog look too surprised? <laughs> She's just surprised today to be giving flowers. know and sometimes just dropping things just a little bit can can make it feel like that's another big problem in doing like faces and everything is you can get too too big in the on the face eyes and then mm -hmm. you know and you don't realize how like actually small they tend to be but they can be quite small and we can back with my number four We can always just play, play, play. Yeah. You got a minute. Back to my dark purple, which is my quinacridone and my ultramarine blue. Get a nice, like, dark purple on there. And let's... See how I'm just touching the toe down to create the lavender? Yeah. That's how we get that little patterning of the flowers, because generally it's a bud, a bud, a bud, a bud. Mm -hmm. That's why they do so well with Q-tips. It's really easy to create the effect. some here and try to make sure that like my like my leaves and things it's multi-directional you want some deep and then you want some at the at the top right right so you gotta you gotta plant your lavender sounds like it'd be fun to do it is fun to plant your lavender <laughs> And I love doing this. It's like the little touch pull. Mm -hmm. Because it does make the perfect little lavender bud. Aren't those wild? Just make little lavenders. It's just, yeah. Painting is like this. It's like you learn a stroke and you're like, oh. Or you learn a technique and you're like, this does a thing. So mistakes are techniques you can repeat. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So ever in art, even if you get a result you don't want. Ask yourself, could you ever get that result again? Could you on, repeat on, it? On demand, right? If you can, that's a technique. Maybe it's not the technique you needed in that moment, <laughs> but it is a technique. This will be useful later. This moment here, this no, technique is that. based on well, one of those sense. mistakes that I was like, oh, I could do this again, and it would be useful in this other location. <clears throat> Now, when I have those flowers like that, I'm going to rinse out, take some of this purple over to my white. Oh, magenta. Quite a light color. Mm. 
Let's highlight some of these. And just putting little highlights in the grass so that they show up. He's just in a bunch of flowers, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not painting in all the dark. I need the contrast. Need it desperately. Yeah. That's how we see our flowers. Contrast lets them show. What a fun, weird little day. Yeah. In a daily painting, uh, if you're part of the daily painting, there's just days. Days have different energies, you know? Mm -hmm. What you learn is that um, you're not waiting for a muse to paint at all from a daily painting. You start to learn that it's process and you and you get into the the mood of it just through the act of doing it the flow of the painting yeah get the feel yeah you do you get the feel you get the idea of it yeah i might come get a little more The green and yellow is so compelling in here. Mm. I might come in and, you know, add some. Yeah. Maybe even a little in his bouquet. You never know. Could be. You don't know. Pick up some along the way. <clears throat> Guys, I think we did it. I think we spent a nice little moment. We painted a cute little pupper in a field. I feel like we nailed it. There's nothing to do but sign. Really looks cute. Difficult to sign a painting like this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to grab some of my white and purple. All right. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Okay. That was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed spending this time with you. I really enjoyed painting him. I hope you learned a lot. I know I did. Every time I do a daily painting, my own personal skills grow, and I think that's important to know is that you're never at the end of your growing journey. John, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, well, thank you for painting. I enjoyed watching you. Now, keep an eye out for those really cool short sneak peeks of the next day's videos in the short shelf, those little one-minute sneak peeks. I think you're really going to love those, get you excited for the next day's painting. I'd love to invite you to take part of the daily painting program that we have here, but if this was just your one, still hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment down below. I teach these free art lessons all year. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye!